Hello, welcome to this video on Inkscape. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a data figure like this. Isn't it beautiful? I'll show you how to plot these graphs in a dedicated vector graphic plotting program. Import them into Inkscape. Replace the text coming from the plotting program with text native to Inkscape. Change the line width and color. Change the bar colors. Indicate significant differences and label the graphs. Let's get started. We will usually plot our graphs in a dedicated program that could allow us to export them into any vector graphic format. Here I've plotted with Qt plot. Look into our links and you'll see tutorials for plotting such graphs with Qt plot or with R which are all free. Never you plot such graphs with Excel. So I'll go here and take file and export graph, select current and export it on the desktop. Equally, I'm going to select a second graph which we have to use and go again to export, export graph, current and export it as a PDF or any other vector format onto the desktop. So we now have this template which we've produced. I'm going to select this information by holding the mouse key down and dragging right up to here to select everything and then hitting delete. Equally, I'm going to select this by holding the mouse key, the left mouse key and pulling right up to this end to select everything and hitting delete. So here we have the space for a one column figure and the space here for a second column. I've pushed this to the side so that we see the graphs we've exported to the desktop as PDF. So to have these graphs into a figure, we're just going to grab the PDF, the left mouse key and pull onto our Inkscape template. Then this window will come up, allowing us to do several settings. I'll leave it just as it is and go OK. When we do that, we'll have a huge graph coming here, which we can pull with the mouse to its position. And let us assume I want to have two of such graphs in one column. So I'll proceed by dividing this column into two. This is 89. I divide it into two and I have 44.5. So I add 44.5 plus 18 we had here and I have 62.5. So I pull a guideline from here, go there, double click, to fix its position and I type in 62.5 and hit enter. So right now we can fit one of the graphs here and the second one here. So in order to scale this graph down, we're going to use the selection tool, click on the graph and then holding the control key down, we're going to grab one of these handles and pull it in to have it fit. It is important to hold the control key down so that you do not skew your graph. So it's come up this way now. I'll release both the mouse and control key. Use the mouse to put it into position. And I see it's fitting in. But we have this text behind here which has to be within this range. So I select, hold the control key down, grab this handle and pull it in for everything to fit within that width. I do same with the second graph here. I hold it with the left mouse key and then pull it onto the page. And this window comes up. I select OK and then bring it up here. I grab it with the handle and pull it to shrink it to fit. Again, I try to put this text to fit within this width. Congratulations, you've now imported your graphs into your Inkscape template. We notice that these two graphs may not fall on the same horizontal layer if we are pulling them and manipulating them this way. So to have them lie on the same horizontal layer, I'm going to select this and then holding down the shift key, select the second one. And this way we've selected all. And then I'm going to go to object and align and distribute. And here we have different options. We could align on a vertical axis and in this case, we want to center on a horizontal axis. So I select this and we notice both graphs are now side by side. Then I close this palette, then zoom in here at about 150. 
we can zoom in some more to see exactly what we're doing. So when we select this, we notice that this line is not exactly fitting with the guide. We hold the control key down again and pull it so that it fits, it snaps with the guide. And here there could be a problem because we have this guide, this grid here, which some sort of snaps on our object. So we could take this for a while by selecting layer one, and then we go to view and then grids. Alternatively, we can hit the pound key on the keyboard. So this way, if I select this and hold the control key down and pull it, the line here is going to snap. This is what I talked about in video one about being able to take away the grid when we need it or leaving it there when it has to guide us. In this case, it was snapping on parts of the object and not letting us align it the way we want to align it. And here too, I'm going to hold the control key down and pull it so that it aligns with this guide. I verify this too by selecting on it and then hold the control key down and pull and hold the control key down here and pull. Right now we have both of our graphs rightly seated in both parts of the quarter column, which we want to use for our figure. So we do one last test again to see if they are aligned or distribute. One way could be to pull a guideline and look at the X axis. But the easier way is to select again, go here, select, hold the shift key down, select this one, go to object, align and distribute and center on this axis. And we see this one just moved a little bit and then we close that. The next thing we will do is to go to each of these graphs and ungroup several times to have its component parts. So we select the graph and then either we right click and go to ungroup or we go here to object, ungroup, object, ungroup, object, ungroup. And at times you need to ungroup several times before you access each of the component parts. So I click by the side and right now after ungrouping several times, you can then click on the individual parts and delete them if you wish. For instance, we can click on this and then hit the delete key. We can also click on this one and hit the delete key, but we notice that it is still grouped with the columns. So what we do again is we go to object and ungroup. And right now we are able to select it and delete. Select this one inside and hit delete. If we click just above the graph, we'll notice that there's a wider area around the graph. And this is a background and we don't need it because we have the canvas here, which is a white background. So if we take the arrow keys on our right keyboard, we can pull this actually to the side and see it is a white background. We hit delete to take away that. What we'll do next is going to be to verify the size of these lines. Delete all of the text here and reproduce them in our own way by using text native to the editing program. So first I'm going to go back to view and then I will call the grids back. So the first thing I'm going to do is to see whether this offset is correct. At this zoom, each of these squares is one millimeter. So here we are having a space of two millimeters between the bars, this and this, and this and this, and this and this. And that, in my opinion, is okay. We could also want to have a space of one millimeter between the bars. The one thing I want to do now is to reduce this offset. So it is way big. We could have done this in the graphing program, but here you also have the flexibility of reducing the offset. So to do this, I'm going to pull a guideline and let it sit here two millimeters away from the first bar. And then I'm going to use the tweak tool, select this line below here, and we see it ends here. Now hold the control key down and then the left mouse key down and pull it and it's going to snap on this guideline. Now we see that there's a gap between this and this. So the next thing we want to do is to bring this axis to be in line with this guideline. So I'm going to use the selection tool and then select by pressing the left mouse key down, pulling from top to bottom. We can do this with the numbers if we wish. 
but I want to illustrate just with the axis. So we pull from top to bottom to select and then holding the control key down, we grab this with the left mouse key and then pull to let it align with this guideline. We click by the side to let go. Now we're through with this guideline, we can pull it back to its origin to delete it. This way we've reduced the offset between this axis and the first bar. We also want to reduce where this line ends. We pull another guideline and place it about two millimeters away from the bar. And then using the tweak tool, we select this and then holding the control key down, we pull it to snap the guide. We then can use the selection tool and then beginning from below in order not to affect any of the objects here, we pull up and select this part which is left and hit delete. So the next thing we want to do is to take away the text down here by using the selection tool to select the text and then pulling it away from the object. And once we have this, we can select the object and change properties of the lines. To do this, we go to object, fill and stroke, and we're going to have this palette come up. Here we can change the fill. Here we can change the stroke pane. And in this case, the stroke pane is black. And here we can change the stroke style. So let's say we put this as points and then we make the stroke style to be one point. And then we go to the stroke paint. Usually it's black. So if we go here and select, we see everything has been aligned to the left. It's black. If our journal wants another size, let's say 0.5 points, we just can select that and hit 0.5, enter, and we're having our new size. So I select this again and Right now, I want us to change the individual colors in here. So what we need to do, first of all, is to have this part selected and then go again to ungroup. We may have to ungroup several times. And once it is ungrouped, we can now select them individually. Supposing I want this one to have a feel of black, then I'll go here and then there are many ways to choose the color. This is RGB, HSL, CMYK, wheel, CMS, and so on. The theory on which color you should use for print media or for screen media will be handled somewhere else. But it is good to note at this point that Inkscape is not very good at handling colors. Most print media will ask you to use CMYK, which is not well implemented in Inkscape. What I'll advise to do is to use RGB, since most Graphs we're going to see nowadays are no longer on paper, but on screen. To ease the choice of the color, we could go to wheel and here we can choose say black or any color of our choice. In this case, this is black, it is approximate. If we want to be exact, we can type in the hexadecimal code here. Another way of choosing quicker is to go down here to this palette and choosing here black. We go to the next, select it. Assuming we want this to this stay blue, we leave it. And the next one, assuming we want it to be green, we go down here and select green. And this next one, assuming we want it to be red, we go down here and select red. So we now have our graphs having the right color. On what combinations these colors can take, we'll discuss about that later, because there's a combination of colors that will give particular contrast and beauty to the eye. After having done this, the next thing we'll do is to go and start writing the text. So let's assume our journal asks us to use the text size of nine. So we go here to the text tool, select it, and then hit here. And we want, first of all, to write, say, control. It's going to come out big, like you see. Then you select it. And then we want some form of a sans serif. Let's say we choose Arial, and then we select here a size of say nine. Some other journals like Nature are particular that you shouldn't go beyond eight, but other journals like Plus One are tolerant on the size you use here. So let's leave it for now at nine. We want this to sit down here and we notice that it is so big. So what we're gonna do is to go onto the selection tool to have it selected and then click on it once and we're going to see this rounded arrows coming. We hold the control key and then pull this up and we're going to have this slanting at 45 degrees. So 
we can select this control, remove it, and we then can put this one into position. To guide it, it's usually useful to select another guideline and then put it right in the middle of the bar and then guide your text to sit that way. The next thing, we want it to be like two millimeters below there. So we use a guide and then pull the text to sit up about two millimeters. Now we grab this part, pull it down to see exactly what it is. And we have the label here too, we pull it down. And now this bar is the drug we are using for treating malaria, it's called Meresin. So in order to write this, we go here, select this, and then take Control D to duplicate it. And holding the Control key down, we can select the new duplicate we've made and put it just below our bar. We can also pull this guideline and place it there so that it guides us later when we are writing the text. So I'm going to rewrite this here. One milligram per kilogram body weight. And we see that this is already going into this graph. So I'm going to use the selection tool and then using the arrows on our keyboard, take it down and have it sit into position. So I'm going to go ahead and do it for the rest and then come back to you. So I've written the labels for all of this down here and I'm going to now hold the mouse key down and select the original text and delete them. So the same way we're going to do the Y axis. And for this, I'm going first of all to take away these guidelines so that they do not stay on the way. I'm going to pull a guideline here and first we want this to stay about one millimeter away from this and Next, we also want this label to stay about one millimeter away from the figures. I'm gonna pick one of these, take Control D to duplicate it, pull it to the side, and then highlight to rewrite. And I'm going to write zero, and then select it, click on it, and bring the zero back to its original position. Then we can now pull this, delete the original one, and have zero sit just right there. We now could select zero, take control D to double, and then use the arrow keys on your right keyboard, go up, select the original 200, delete, and then replace that with 200. Then use the selection tool to select that and use the arrow keys on your keyboard to bring it to position. And when bringing it to position, you can use these arrows here as orientation or you can pull guidelines if you wish. If I pull a guideline here to stay there and why this is selected, I hold the control key down and move it up. You notice that it snaps to the middle of this guideline. So I delete this guideline back. I'm going to go ahead now and produce the other labels and come back to you. To summarize, in this present video, we have been configuring most of the parts of this graph. We are left with this label and these sort of labels. In the next video, we are going to write this label and indicate these other parts and then use the existing text here to transfer to this graph and configure them and also configure the parts of this graph. Thank you for watching this video. Please continue with the next one to see how we'll configure the remaining part of the data figure.